Welcome to the shooting show. This week, James Marchington follows Gary Green on an Essex muntjac hunt, plus I go to Portugal on a Monteria for driven red stag and wild boar. Not everything always goes to plan for the rifle shooter, not even an experienced one like Gary Green. He's out after a fox, but soon he's going to get more than he bargained for. Well, today we've set off at 6.30, 6.45 I think, um, in hopes to maybe catch up with a fox, but chances are we're going to see Fallow and Monk Jack probably as well, but there's a fox that's been pestering in the farm around the chickens. Uh, Shot loads here this year, just can't seem to get on top of them at all. Um, and it's seen leaving the field where the actual chickens are, coming behind the bungalow and going straight down towards the gate, ducking under the gate and literally going right across here where I'm in front of the high seat. Yeah, so we, we got in nice and early, very foggy, a bit crunchy underfoot as well. Um, got in nice and quiet, nice and stealthy. Yeah, using um, another Tika of mine, not, uh, not the 243 for a change, uh, 6.5. So I was thinking we may get a long shot on a fallow here, a little bit more put down power. Yeah, it's, um, it's a good bit of kit. It's a bit overkill for Muntjac, but you know, it's, uh, it does the job well. Um, Savosky Optics again, nice, you know, crisp, illuminated dot reticle. Variable scope, this one, which uh, is, is nice different ranges, it gives more clarity. Yeah, conditions for, for visibility was poor. Um, fog was really in here. But this Foskies surprised me actually, looking into the wood, I could actually punch through there quite a way, about 150 yards. It did come in really thick at one point and that sort of cut them back a bit, but as soon as it lifts, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing stuff through there where I could never see anything near with the eye. As the mist clears, Gary spots his first wildlife of the morning, but it isn't the fox he came for. Sort of looking in quite thick mist, I could see broadside, I could see the white flanks of two fallow, which was on the edge of the wood. but nowhere near enough in the scope or the binoculars to, to be sure of a real safe shot there. So that was just ignored. And they hung around there for quite some time. That was nice to watch, hoping they might come out. Last time we saw Gary Green, he was being tested for his DSC-1. Now he's got the qualification and this might be a chance to put it to good use. Sadly, the books aren't interested and stay at a distance. Gary is powerless to do anything but wait and see what they do next. They didn't, they disappeared into the wood. It was nothing to do with us, it's just what they wanted to do. And then we, we sat on. Yeah, I've got an illuminated dot reticle on that Savosky, which is quite fine. I like to see through as much as I can. I don't want a big beaming light there close. I want to be able to see through, so I'm still concentrated on right through the animal, right out the back for obvious reasons, for safety. But I find the clarity of it is just perfect. Even in this foggy conditions, as I've said, it's, it works really well for me. Scanning round with the old Savoskis there and pick up a big old golden face of a lovely muntjac buck. About 100 yards, it was perfect. Out he came, sat there, getting stuck into 
bit of fruit there he was, and there was plenty of time to make a good shot on him. It didn't go quite as nice as I'd like. It didn't drop completely on the spot. He went a few yards and dropped into the ditch there. But, you know, that's sometimes the way it goes. Um, I stayed away from a neck shot or towards a head shot because he had particularly what I thought in the in the scope a reasonable head on him. When attended him, fetched him back. We quickly discovered the buck in the dead ground. It was a clean shot and hadn't gone far. Next up is retrieval and examination of the carcass and location of the gecko bullet to inspect Gary's shot placement. All is in order, but we're not done yet. We came for a fox and we might get it yet. But again, fate has other ideas. No sooner has Gary installed himself in the high seat for a second time than he gets another surprise. We're having a chat up at the top of the high seat there. <laughs> I look up and there's another buck come out right to the spot of where we actually um, shot the other one. He started to make a way. I shouted him, give him a bit of a stop. <laughs> no doubt about this one, it's down on the spot. Well, two. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You wait all that time for one and then just like London buses, two come along together. <laughs> well, he came exactly to the spot where we shot the other one. Exactly. Let's make safe. That's good. With two books bagged, Gary has certainly earned his stalker's breakfast, even if it's not what he came for. But his work isn't over yet, as the Gralic still needs to be performed. Yeah, another nice buck. Yeah, that, so that was two Munchak, as I say, a bit like the London buses. One comes along and then the other one follows it, so you've got two there. <laughs> The Gralikin, I, I might do a little bit different to some, uh, in that I don't cut through the pelvic blade. I sort of do it the same way as a fallow. I sort of just chase around the anus and take the penal sheath down. But it, it's, it's just how I do it, you know. I think if you're sort of helping someone learn how to Gralik, if you can do one of these little fellas in the same way as a fallow, when you get your hands on a fallow, it's quite straightforward, as long as you take your time and just, you know, just piece your way through nice and easy. There's no rush. Yeah, next step for these guys is get them back to the, the chiller, um, wash them out now, give them a good clean up, maybe take the hocks off, uh, hang them up and let them sit in there for a week or so. Uh, one a lady only phoned me last night wanted a munchak for Christmas, so it looks like I've got that for Chrissy. Um, and then we'll just skid them up and butcher them up accordingly when we, when we think we're softened down a bit. Two knives I use mostly on um, fallow and munchak are these two. One's a frost, which I tend to use for going straight up through the ribs. Don't use a chest saw so much on those. And the other one's a, a Puma Hunter's Pal. Holds a good edge, nice, nice knife to work with. So that's my sort of favourites. There's plenty in there, but that's my favourite too. Tends to do the job on them little guys fine. Didn't see a fox at all here today, which did surprise me. 
Uh, but, you know, I've left two Gralocks out there now. I've taken the liver art and kidneys out of them for breakfast. Um, just give him a day, come back early morning, late evening. May even come back this evening, and I think we'll probably pick the fox up then with a bit of luck. And then everyone's happy with that. But he's been a bit of a pest since this cold spell come in. I think Gent's lost another couple of chickens here, but, you know, it's, it's just relentless with these foxes at the moment. Can't seem to make much headway with them, but just keep on them. High seat shooting has proved its worth once again today, and Gary can head home a happy man. But a wildlife manager's job is never done. Soon Gary will be back out after the marauding fox that brought us here in the first place. Maybe next time it'll be kind enough to make an appearance. Gary there completing the Muntjack double, and now the shooting show sure news. This is the Shooting Show News. Work has begun on the ranges for the shooting events at next year's Commonwealth Games. The Barry Budden Shooting Centre in Carnoustie will host all the shooting events, including clay, air gun and rifle shooting. Games organisers have released images of what the finished ranges will look like. The Glasgow 2014 Chief Executive said it would be a world-class venue. Welsh wildfowlers are doing their bit for conservation by recording vital information on Greenland white-fronted geese. A new goose recording form is being distributed with every shooting permit on the Dovey estuary. This will allow shooters to add to international recording projects and inform future management of the overwintering population in Wales. Basque's policy development manager Connor O'Gorman said the project was of great importance to ensuring the species keeps returning to Wales. Amber Hill has a new shotgun sponsorship deal with Parazzi. The ISSF World Cup gold medalist and Young Sports Personality of the Year nominee will shoot an MX 2008 at competitions from 2014. 16-year-old skeet shooter Amber said she would have a personalised stock made with her new gun, then get training as soon as possible. More in the next issue of Clay Shooting Magazine. An RSPCA advert has been banned for being inaccurate and alarmist. In response to the Badger Cull trials, the advert asked readers the question, vaccinate or exterminate? The Advertising Standards Authority ruled that the advert was misleading. Animal welfare consultant Jim Barrington said the result doesn't reflect well on the RSPCA, especially after the negative publicity the organisation has received throughout 2013. And finally, the lobbying bill needs to be urgently rewritten. That's the message from an independent cross-party commission. The bill would have imposed tighter restrictions on charities' involvement in political campaigning. Shooting organisations such as the Countryside Alliance have said the bill could shut them down for a whole year in the run-up to general elections. The Alliance's James Legg described the bill in its initial form as unacceptable. The result of the Commission's review means it is likely to see wholesale changes. That was the Shooting Show News. I've swapped cold and windy Britain for something altogether more pleasant. A driven boar and red deer hunt in Portugal, courtesy of Merkel, Kylie's and RWS. This type of Iberian hunting is known as a Monteria. Shooting journalists from across Europe have gathered to test out Merkel's latest addition to their range, the Helix. Once again I would like to thank you to come in Portugal and hunt with us in Mancha Maior. You all know what you can shoot today. You all can shoot foxes today, because that fox I have to <laughs> talk about yesterday on the other side. They have saw him this morning. Um, you can shoot and you must shoot one red deer male, two red deer females and all the boars that you can and are able to and the foxes of course. No other species. No mufflin ships, no follow deers, no nothing. Please. I'm quite sure that you all are gonna see some game, I hope lots of game, so enjoy yourself, be careful, uh, as I told you, the, the people that will uh, get you in the, the post will tell you if that's the post that you must be aware and you can see it perfectly, if you can't see it, it definitely isn't there. In Portugal, we have a tradition, first of a uh, driven, we all get <laughs> a moment, a moment, those who pray can pray for the, the dead uh, hunters, those that cannot be with us physically, but we are sure they are with us seeing what we do. 
if you can please accompany me. Introductions complete, I'm eager to get hunting. Picking up a Merkel Helix straight pull rifle, I find out which post I'll be on and head out. In the field, hunting guide Pedro takes me through the specifics of the Monteria. It's safe to, to shoot all around, there's no problem at all. Okay. You just have to be aware of the dogs yep. and the matillero. Okay, oh the beaters, the matillero. The beaters. Yeah, yep. exactly. Okay. Otherwise, there's no problem here. Okay, so, so all sides it's, yeah. it's all safe. And the dogs come from this, from this side. Yeah. And then turn around and come back. And come back, okay, yeah. perfect. This area is a high population of both boar and red deer that cause significant damage to the trees and the precious available grazing. This annual Monteria is crucial to keeping the population in check and avoid any agricultural conflicts with the farmers. With a 360 degree field of view and quarry coming from every potential direction, the Monteria is a hunt like no other. And it's not long before I get my first bit of action. The hounds have flushed out a boar and are in full cry across the open ground. I'll just be a spectator for this one, but it's riveting viewing indeed. It's clear how the Monteria works. Beaters and hounds work in tandem to hopefully drive the game in a set direction, moving from one patch of thick cover to another. The working pack makes an impressive sight. Not that I'm thinking too hard about it. The balmy weather has taken its effect, and I'm making the most of a lull in the action with a bit of sun-induced shut-eye. After all, there's nothing like a hectic trip overseas followed by a relaxing environment to put you in a slumber. But soon there's something worth waking up for. The hounds are in full cry and possibly pushing a wild boar towards me. Sleep dispelled, I watch on eagerly. Now the excitement of the Monteria is really mounting. No sooner have I taken my eyes off the boar than I spy some hinds coming from the opposite direction. Rifle at the ready, I will the hounds to do their job and bring the deer in closer to my position. It's not to be this time, but my spirits are still high. The drive has been going barely two hours, and I've already seen more than my share of wildlife. The beaters and hounds are still following the plan to the letter, finding and flushing the game out towards the patiently waiting rifles. A red deer calf comes by within range, but I let it pass. I'm looking for something bigger. Finally I get what I'm after as a large group of hinds accompanied by two stags comes in close. I think you should take this shot. Pedro is in no doubt. Chances don't come better than this. All I need is for the left hand stag to stop clear of the others. <laughs> the shot runs true, fell in the stag where he stands but the magic of the Monteria means the fun isn't over. Behind you! Behind you! One hundred and eighty degree turn later I've got my second beast in the bag. This one is a big boar sow that came out of some dead ground behind my position. Even though I'm a left-hander the straight pull action of the helix was very quick indeed. Minutes later the drive ends and we inspect the fallen quarry. Big pig. Yeah, it's a female. Yeah, yeah, big female. One right through the eye. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice shot. Well, what a day. Driven game hunting Portuguese style. Uh, called a Monteria. Uh, we saw a lot of red deer today. Uh, some mouflon, uh, fleetingly, uh, and wild boar. Uh, fantastic. And, didn't start long uh, before a, a group of hinds and a couple of stags uh, came into the hunt, uh, into my field of view, it came straight in onto my arc of fire, uh, picked the stag, he stopped, nice shot from, uh, from the helix there, performed very very well and then uh, almost immediately a, a wild boar came in from behind, uh, I turned about and uh, took the backer, a big female boar, uh, straight behind me. Uh, Pedro was very pleased about that. Uh, fantastic. Strange place really uh, to hunt because uh, it's a 
very quiet area in the Cork Oak Groves and we just uh, sat there with all the acorns falling out uh, down and around us. You can see all the cork trees uh, where they've harvested the cork around and uh, very picturesque and uh, you know halcyon days really uh, started to nod off uh, almost immediately very relaxing. My first Iberian red stag 10 pointer. Many thanks to Pedro and all the guys. As the short hunt concludes, we respectfully line up the fallen game in tribute. There's an impressive tally including quite a few monster specimens of both species. And the Merkel Helix has certainly proved its worth, with a unanimous nod of approval from knowledgeable guests. Norwegian hunter Johund proves he's a man of few words. We'd like to say a few words, Johan. Uh, yes, it's dead. <laughs> but this hunt has been more about than the numbers. It's about the unparalleled hunting experience that is the Monteria and preserving the balance of the environment in a traditional way. As the guests swap stories, we take a quick look into the remarkable shooting lodge where the apparel hunt festivities will soon begin. The trophies taken over the years clearly prove this is a well-managed estate. This hunt has been superbly managed by Paolo and Pedro and I can't wait to take part in my next Iberian Monteria. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.